Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm Max Crouch. I'm the branch president at the Assisted Living Center where uh, Roy has been. It's a pleasure to uh, be here today and participate with you all. I want to thank the uh, funeral staff uh, for their attention and, and compassion as they've uh, prepared for us. Um, and I want to thank uh, Richard Corbridge for a beautiful family prayer that was just administered. So uh, we're going to begin the services today uh, by... Uh, singing on, uh, singing, uh, Be Still My Soul. And the words to the uh, song are on that uh, paper that you just uh, have access to. So, um, pianist is Sam Corbridge, grandson, and uh, Richard is going to be the uh, chorister. Then our invocation will be by Jenna Corbridge, uh, granddaughter. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we can gather together as family and friends to celebrate the life of Grandpa Roy. 
We are thankful for our memories and the time we had it with him. We're thankful for all the freedoms of this country that he fought to maintain. We pray that the service will provide peace and comfort to all of us mourning his passing. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. That prayer was beautiful. <clears throat> um, let me go over the program quickly. Uh, we'll hear uh, some tribute and eulogy from um, Parker, Austin, and Davis Five grandsons, after which uh, uh, Derek Hodges, a grandson, will uh, share some remarks. Roy Monroe, Roy Monroe Giles Jr., retired colonel, United States Air Force, passed away March 22, 2024, in Payson, Utah, after a wonderful life of 90 years. He was born on September 25, 1933. He was the oldest of six children, including Alta Moser, Paul Giles, Wilma Holloway, Emil Giles, and Lauren Giles. He married, he married Isla Dolores Turner Tobin in 1963, raised two children, then later married Doris Kathleen Catton in 1991. Roy's early years took place in Arkansas, and from there his parents moved the family to Ontario, California, where he graduated from Chafee High School. He became an enlisted member of the Air Force, working initially as a mechanic for the B-47 Strata Jet. Roy was accepted to the officer's candidate training school, and upon completion of his training, he became a co-pilot as a second lieutenant flying KC-135 air refueling tankers and progressed through the officer ranks. In 1961, Roy was transferred to McCoy Air Force Base in Orlando, Florida in support of the Bay of Pigs. After leaving Orlando, he was assigned to Castle Air Force Base, California, as a simulator instructor and continued to fly the KC-135's air refueling tanker. His next transfer was to Montgomery, Alabama at the, Air, at the Air Command and Staff College, where he received additional training for advancement. Roy served in Vietnam flying the C-7 Caribou while instructing South Vietnamese aviators to fly jets. He returned home assigned to staff operations located in Riverside, California at March Air Force Base while attending night school at Chapman University, where he received a bachelor's degree in business. His career led him to Ellsworth Air Force Base, South Dakota, where he became a commander of the 28th Air Refueling Squadron, leading a staff of over 200. His final Air Force assignment stationed him to Norton Air Force Base at the Air Command and Staff College where he retired in 1983 as a full colonel. Roy received the following medals and awards during his Air Force career, and I'll try my best. The Legion of Merits, the Distinguished Flying Cross, Meritorious Servo Service Medal with one oak leaf cluster, Air Force Medal with three oak leaf cl clusters, Air Force Outstanding Unit Award with Valor and two Oak Leaf Clusters, Air Force Organizational Excellence Award, Combat Readiness Medal, Army Good Conduct Medal, National Defense Medal with one service star, Vietnam Service Medal with three service stars, Air Force Longevity Service Award Ribbon with six Oak Leaf Clusters, Armed Forces Reserve Medal, Authority AFR 910, Small Arms Expert mark Marksmanship Ribbon, Vietnam Gallantry Cross with Palm Leaf, Foreign Decoration, Training Service Honor Medal, First Class Vietnam, and Republic of Vietnam Campaign Medal. Upon retiring from the Air Force, Roy was hired by Northrop Grumman in Pico Rivera, California. He was part of a team of technical writers responsible for producing 
the safety and flight instruction manual for the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. From 1972 to the early 1980s, Roy was a member of, the, of several Presbyterian churches in Riverside, California, Rapid City, South Dakota, and later Redlands, California. After meeting Doris, Roy later became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, ministering and serving families in whatever capacity he was needed. He and Doris were sealed together in the San Diego, California temple in September 1994. When his family was young, he loved building and working on some of their early homes, taking road trips and vacations through the Black Hills, Wyoming, and the Grand Canyon, to name a few. Roy loved cars and anything to do with Fords. He owned Mustangs, Thunderbirds, and Broncos throughout his life, to name a few. A devoted husband, loving father, and supportive son to his parents, Roy made his family feel loved and cherished. After Roy and Doris retired, they enjoyed traveling and exploring new places with many of Doris's siblings, Dennis and Marva Cadden, Miriam and Al Cole, and Janice and Mark Whiting. Genealogy was one of his favorite things, which inspired him to travel to faraway places like England, Ireland, and locations across the U.S. Roy and Doris were dedicated grandparents and enjoyed traveling from state to state to be at all the various grandchildren's activities and sports. In March 2022, Roy moved to Orchard View Assisted Living in Payson, Utah, where he enjoyed new friends, new activities, and outings. He was loved, respected, well cared for, and his days there were happy and peaceful. He is survived by his children, Monroe Giles, Sonia Fife, Chris and David Hodges, Lois Quinn and Debbie Corbridge, Richard and Elaine Corbridge, his grandchildren, Parker Austin Davis, Matthew Quinn and Julia, Rachel and Dane, Derek and Jessica, Micah and Marjorie, Adi and Philip, Lois Quinn and Victoria, Casey, Sam and Holly, Seth and Gabby, Joe, Jenna, and 18 more great-grandchildren. Roy is preceded in his death by his wife, Doris Kathleen Cadden, parents Ruth Catherine West, and Roy, Mon Roy Monroe Giles Sr., and siblings Alta, Paul, and Wilma. Thank you. Grandpa Roy was loved and admired by many people, including his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We all have fond memories of our time spent with him. We compiled some of these memories, which I get the privilege of sharing. We've also included some memories from others that shared the lasting impressions that Grandpa has left. <sighs> I remember Grandpa loving his Legos. Every time we went over to visit, he was excited to show us his latest set, talking about all the spaceships, planes, and cars that he could. It was clear he loved building them, and it was fun to see him excited about them. Peppermint ice cream. Grandpa loved peppermint ice cream and loved that he shared it with, and I love that he shared it with us. Every time we visited Grandpa and Grandpa's house, shortly upon walking through the door, he would call me into the kitchen to show me the goods, and we would always enjoy a bowl together before we left. Before our house was finished being built, Roy installed all the floor tile and did the basement wiring for us. He was in his 60s at that point, 
and tiling is very physical work. I don't remember being very much help, but he got it done. We really appreciate him and having tile on our floors. Grandpa always had the best video games. It was always fun to visit grandma and grandpa. At one point in our childhood, we were lucky enough to inherit grandpa's old Nintendo 64 with Zelda Ocarina of Time on it. I was young enough to not really know how to play, so I would run around on grandpa's file, which he had named GP Roy. It was cool to play through the game and see what he saw and remember him every time an NPC said, thank you, Grandpa Roy. We had the honor of meeting Roy on a few occasions, and he was such a gentleman. I think the first time was in 1988. We called in to see Roy and Doris on our way to Disneyland. We also arranged on other occasions when visiting the area to meet up for lunch. Roy was always so interesting to converse with. The, those lunch on, lunch ons with him and Doris always seemed to end too soon. When we parted to go our separate ways, Roy would always guide us back with the instructions to the highway to continue our journey. I remember Grandpa Giles always being supportive of what I was doing in my life, whether it was celebrating my Eagle Scout award or supporting me at track meets. He'd always be interested and supportive of me. Grandpa and Grandma spent many nights on the pull-out sofa bed so they could be there for sporting events and special occasions. Grandpa was there when I was getting ready for prom my junior year. I had picked out a new nail polish to match my dress, and it was Grandpa who painted my nails for me. Apparently, he was an expert because he painted Sonia's nails, too. As a young Air Force cadet and officer, I didn't get to sit I didn't get to say it very often, but I thought it was super cool that I could say my dad wrote the B2 pilot's manual. That's so cool. At the time, the B2 was one of the latest and greatest airplanes and to have a dad who wrote the pilot's manual was super awesome. I really liked when grandpa came to watch my soccer games because he was always up for getting ice cream afterwards. As an adult, we had plans to go to Disneyland. Grandpa and Grandma were going to meet us there so we could use Grandpa's military discount on our tickets. I had made a reservation at the Blue Bayou for lunch for the four of us. Grandpa was really excited. He told me that he'd always wanted to eat there. I'd eaten there before, and I knew I wanted the Monte Cristo sandwich. We all decided that we wanted the sandwich, and when the waitress told us that it was a large serving, and that we'd probably be good with just two sandwiches between all four of us, Grandpa told her, we'd each like our own. Turns out, the waitress wasn't lying. We each walked out with leftovers. I remember great grandpa really liked eagles and airplanes. He liked to show us the room he had with all the eagles and the airplane things. I was a shuttle driver for Orchard View for two and a half years. Roy came on. Came on every scenic drive. He was always so kind and pleasant. He was a great man indeed. So happy that I got to know him. In elementary school, we always celebrated Veterans Day by learning more about the veterans in our lives. I got to ask great grandpa about his time in the Air Force and made a poster displayed at the school to celebrate him. Roy was a builder of projects. He would build his own computers. He remodeled the condo that he and Doris had in Redlands, and he helped me and others with home projects and remodeling. He was always generous with offering help wherever help was needed even when it became difficult for him to do so. He will always be remembered for his willingness to help others. He not only helped, but taught others how to do projects, such as plumbing, carpentry, tile work, crown moldings, and more. 
He was a hobbyist of many trades. He'll be remembered for much, including his compassionate heart and willingness to tend, uh, lend a helping hand. One of my fun memories is that Roy was a collector of many things, model airplanes, coins, model cars, beanie babies, which he loved to collect with Doris and more. During football season before the game, he liked to go to McDonald's and sit in the car and have a Happy Meal. I think that it was because he liked the simplicity of the meal, but also because he liked collecting the toys that came with the Happy Meal. He then distributed the toys to the younger grandchildren when they came to visit. He was a thoughtful grandpa. Great Grandpa Giles liked to build with Legos. He made many really big Star Wars spaceships and liked to show them to us. My brothers have some of those spaceships now, and I got an eagle made of Legos that he made. Roy was the best gift wrapper. He was very particular about his gift wrapping. It didn't matter if it was for Christmas, a birthday, a special occasion. No one could match his attention to detail. His lines were straight, his corners were always wrinkle-free, and seams were seamless. He wanted gifts he gave to show his thoughtfulness in every detail. His gifts were always so beautiful with gift wrapping, so flawless, that you almost didn't want to open the present and destroy his hard work in making the perfect presentation. During high school, grandma and grandpa were always there to support us in our various activities. Every Friday during football season, grandma and grandpa would drive me to the school to drop me off for pregame meetings and stretches. Every Friday before getting out of the car, grandpa would give me a motivating sentence or two that always had something to do with the mascot of the school we were playing against that week. It was always witty, never inappropriate, but usually a little edgy. While Grandpa and I would both chuckle, Grandma would usually get out a little giggle while exclaiming, Roy, or Grandpa, accompanied with a little smack on his arm. Her reaction would just make Grandpa and I laugh more. I would share these with my teammates, and it caught on to the point of half the team waiting in anticipation every Friday for me to tell them the motivational remarks my grandpa gave me that week. When I was home on break between college semesters one summer, Roy took me to watch the space shuttle land at Edwards Air Force Base. We drove up the night before and slept in the car, as much as you can truly sleep in a car. Of course, we couldn't get very close but at the appointed time we watched that little white dot come through the clouds make a sweeping left turn land and roll to a stop in the distance the landing was really kind of underwhelming but i thought it was cool that he'd take me to see it roy loved cars particularly fords almost as much as he loved planes he was so proud that his son monroe was a certified ford master mechanic he enjoyed his own vehicles and would talk about the next new car he wanted to get. I never saw but heard he was collecting parts so he could rebuild a Ford Thunderbird. In his later years, he and his son Monroe would talk about the new Ford Bronco that was coming out, and he would dream of getting one for the, of the sport model versions. He had the color and accessories all chosen. A dream, however, would only be a dream. He soon had to give up his driver license. It was hard for him to do so, as it is for many. But he knew it was the, for his own safety and the safety of others. In his wallet, he always carried two licenses, one for driving and one for flying. When his driver's license expired and he gave up driving, he would occasionally pull out his flying license and proclaim with a big smile that this license does not expire. 
So technically, he could still fly. He knew he really couldn't, but it was a happy moment for him to know that his flying license was still good. I remember Roy as a quiet private man who was not boisterous about his accomplishments and abilities. He was very friendly, but did not talk about his life unless asked. So I came to realize that although he did not openly brag and give information about his career, he very much liked it when others would show interest and ask him to share about his careers. He had an amazing career both in military and as a civilian. He will always be remembered as a true patriot who loved his country. I remember the first time I met Roy was when I was dating Quinn in high school. He went, we went out to eat for a family dinner and at the end he gave me a big hug and treated me like I was part of the family. I was so appreciative of how welcoming and kind he was that night. And I came to realize that was just who he was as a person, kind, accepting, and always welcoming. I have never met anyone so appreciative. He always said thank you after every meal. He loved the color blue. He was a collector of many things, some of which allowed us to go on many adventures. My kids shared his fondness for Legos, which that love continues to grow with all my grandkids. When we went to Nauvoo with Roy and Doris, we had some old time photos taken. My memory of those photos is how much Roy looked like an English gentleman straight out of the Charles Dickens novel. He wore a top hat and had a cane and looked like the perfect gentleman. I thought this costume fit his personality well. And last one, Roy was so much more to me than my big brother. He always made me feel safe and loved. From the time I can remember, Roy always made sure I had what I needed. Not only material things, but he also made me feel protected. Roy loved me, and he let me know which I will always treasure. Whether it was a bedroom set he bought for, bought for me or a bike, he was so generous and caring. I'll never forget that bike. It was a Schwinn 10-speed. None of my friends had a bike like that. I was so very proud of it, and as I got older, I realized that he couldn't afford it. But he always wanted his brothers and sisters to feel taken care of, and happy. I couldn't be prouder to call Roy my big bro. Thank you. Those are great remarks, great memories. Uh, when I think about Roy, there's two things that stand out to me. One is his military experience. He devoted his whole career uh, to defending and honoring our country. And if any of you have uh, served in the military, thank you. Thank you for your service. The other thing that uh, strikes me about uh, Roy is his valiant faith in the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, first as a Presbyterian, then as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I just want to take a moment and uh, I'm going to go over just a couple of uh, miracles that Jesus performed. Um, but it's easy to see how those miracles helped those people 2,000 years ago. But I want, as I read these, this list of miracles, I want you to think of how those miracles help us nowadays. <clears throat> so the apostles, before they were apostles, were out fishing. They fished at night, evidently, and they came back in the morning with nothing. And um, the guy on the shore says, well, throw your nets on the other side of the boat. Well, they did, and they and the nets were so heavy they couldn't pull them up with the number of fish they caught. Well, that guy on the shore was Jesus Christ. And he went on to perform uh, a lot of miracles. He turned water to wine. He withered 
uh, he uh, healed uh, uh, somebody's withered hand. Um, he restored the sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf. Yes, that helped those people. How is it helping us? He fed the 5,000. He healed the lepers. Now, leprosy was a scourge at that time. And uh, people were isolated. Uh, it was worse than COVID, worse than wearing a mask. They had to go around uh, declaring uh, that they were unclean so that people could be warned to stay away from the lepers so they wouldn't get sick too. So he healed the unclean. Uh, he calmed the sea. He walked on water. Um, then he did something that was just beyond explanation. He raised Lazarus from the dead, and he raised uh, the daughter of Jairus from the dead. Inexplicable things, total miracles. <clears throat> um, then, you know, he did all these miracles, and word got out. And so people were flocking to Jesus to be cured of whatever ailed them. He, Jesus was speaking in a, um, in a home, and the throng was so thick in there. Uh, there, there was a, a guy that was, had palsy, he was bedridden, and his friends were trying to get him in so that Jesus could heal him. And uh, they actually couldn't get him in on his bed because their people were in the way. So they uh, cut a hole in the roof and lowered the bed down so it could be placed in front of Jesus, hoping that this man with the palsy could be healed. Well, uh, Jesus saw their faith, and he said something. You know, I'm sure that the man with palsy thought he was going to be healed. But Jesus said something surprising. He said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. <laughs> so, Jesus can heal the unclean. He can forgive sins. Well, <clears throat> that's not exactly what the man with palsy was intent upon when he went there. And because Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven thee, his uh, detractors criticized him, said only God can forgive sins. Well, that's because Jesus was a member of the Godhead. <clears throat> and, and, and then Jesus says, who can forgive sins but God alone. Whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to rise up and walk. So he's challenging his detractors. And it says, and then he says, kind of, oh, by the way, you're healed too. Take your bed and, uh, and take up your bed and walk. So, <clears throat> Uh, to me, here's how that affects us nowadays. Um, it gives us faith. Faith is another word for trust. So it tells us that we can trust Jesus Christ to do what he said he would do. He will heal us. He's going to give us the resurrection, a free gift to all of us. So all of us will see each other again after we have died. The other thing it, it does is it gives us um, the realization that through the atonement of Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven of our sins and be made clean like the lepers were made clean. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, 
Now uh, we'll have a, <clears throat> a uh, closing hymn, Each Life That Touches Ours for Good. And uh, it's also on your program, on your paper there. I want to thank the pianist, uh, Sam, and uh, the conductor, Richard Corbridge. Then the uh, benediction will be by uh, Micah Hodges, a grandson. After that, uh, we'll, after the closing prayer, uh, the, uh, we'll go to the uh, uh, Veterans Cemetery. The address is on your program uh, for the military honors and, and burial. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time we've had to spend together as family and friends and to share the memory and love of our grandfather and our father and our friend. We're grateful for the memories that we have and we ask that we may be able to carry them with us, that they may bring us solace and strength. We're grateful for the example and the love that Grandpa Roy provided to all of us. We ask for thy spirit to be with us to help us remember that love and to carry on his memory and to share that love and example with others. We are so very grateful for everything that thou has blessed us with and with the knowledge that we shall meet again. And say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Everyone, please rise. Thank you for your participation today.
Those ones are they're taking that now. These four? Yeah. 